And continuing on with malware, we might as well start where I started with viruses. Now there's there's viruses and there's viruses and then there's not viruses. Um, not everything that goes wrong with a computer is a virus. A virus is a self-reproducing uh, piece of code which requires the assistance of the user. And I'll go into that uh, perhaps in a moment here. Um, there's uh, I, some very interesting variations on it. For example, way back in 1998, uh, um, we started to see some fake viruses and somebody came up with the metavirus. And that was just, you don't code anything. You actually just say, uh, oh, there's a terrible virus going around and it, uh, it, it copies itself every time you plug a computer in and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, all, all kinds of weird and wonderful things that this virus does. And, and so, you know, there's absolutely no um, uh, means to get rid of it. And, um, and it, this was a, an interesting later edition when, when people actually started doing this. Um, and, and yes, people did start doing this. Hoax viruses were quite a big thing for quite a while. Um, and all those reports would always say, you know, this, is, this virus is so new that none of the virus researchers know anything about it. So, you know, you would not go to an expert because they didn't know anything about it. You would just do what the, the report says, which was basically, you know, uh, tear your computer apart, drill holes in your hard drive, smash your CPU with a hammer, and, and so on and so forth. You know, well, uh, this didn't do anything in terms of uh, getting people access to your resources, but it was an excellent denial of service attack because an awful lot of people did that kind of garbage and ridiculous stuff. Anyways, that's, um, as I say, you know, hoax viruses, but basically started with a metavirus way back at the beginning. Uh, there is nothing new under the sun, particularly with regard to viruses. Worms are... Uh, Self-reproducing, um, worms do not have to uh, have any action by the user. Worms um, uh, directly exploit some vulnerability in the operating system or the network operating system um, that allows them to uh, uh, copy themselves onto the machine, um, start making use of the resources, um, Resources being computing, sometimes being storage, um, very often being uh, communications links, these days anyways. Um, and worms, because they don't require any action, by the, any action by the user, um, they spread faster than viruses do. Uh, viruses, um, some of the viruses that we've seen have uh gone worldwide in hours um i i think uh the world record worm uh hit about 75 percent of its target uh, uh systems um within minutes and i mean you know just like three minutes um and it was all over the world um so yeah there's uh there's an advantage there to the worms, but you, you have to you know find some system weaknesses that uh, can be exploited. Um, the uh, the virus, as I say, um, requires some kind of user action, but very often the user action is very simple. Uh, boot sector infectors, for example, you know just sticking the uh, uh, the floppy disk in, in a drive and, and starting up the computer, which used to be a, a very, very common practice. Um, the uh, uh, answering an email or even just reading an email with certain types of email readers. Um, Outlook, uh, Microsoft's Outlook for, for a while was definitely something you wanted to avoid because it was just... Uh, yeah, everybody attacked that platform because it was so prevalent and, and there were all kinds of ways that just having uh, uh, the uh, virus-laden message show up on your preview screen got into the system and, and started uh, sending out copies, copying your uh, uh, address book, contacts list, uh, those types of things. 
Um, now, in regard to uh, the the types of viruses, um, uh, I, there there are m more types of viruses now than than there used to be. Um, used to be, you just had the file infectors that would uh, attach itself or or link itself. Um, those linking viruses were uh, uh, not really firing file infectors because it wouldn't attach itself onto the actual file, but it would find um, uh, some operating system uh, linkages. For example, if you have program.bat, program.com, and program.exe, they're all executable files in uh, Windows, in, in DOS, but uh, there is a uh, there is a preference. So if you if you say you know run program dot bat, it'll run program dot bat. But if you just say run program, um, then it's going to be the one that's first on the the preference list when when there are multiple uh, program files, executable files of different types. And so that's what a, you know. A linking virus would um, do that. It would create itself without touching the original. Uh, executable file uh, and therefore the, the virus w would run first and then pass execution on to the program that you were originally called if, if it wanted to avoid detection. Um, uh, but a file infector would, would actually uh, attach itself onto a particular executable program. Very interesting, um, back in the day I had a great preference for uh, the word perfect um, word processor and word perfect uh, oddly uh, well odd, oddly in that it's it's odd that nobody else did it but word perfect would would check its own file size and and um, sort of a hash uh, when it started to run and and so um, if word perfect got infected with any of these early file infectors it wouldn't run it would say um, you know uh, something is wrong with with the program and and quit um, and uh, uh, that was, you know, an interesting. It wasn't uh, set up as an antivirus uh, tool, but it, it definitely acted that way if you knew what was happening. Uh, boot sector infectors, as I say, putting a floppy disk in. Um, the, the boot sector, well, every, every disk in uh, the FAT file allocation table file system uh, has a, um, a boot sector, which... Uh, either says, you know, this disk doesn't have an operating system on it or points to where the operating system starts. Um, uh, every disk, uh, floppy, removable, uh, hard disk, whatever. Um, and so uh, this was a, a location that uh, a, a virus creator could uh, uh, use as a, you know, as sort of a guarantee, um, and it would, uh, depending on how it was written, uh, some of them would infect uh, hard disks, some of them wouldn't, but uh, pretty much all of them would infect floppy disks, and for quite a while that was the, uh, the way to uh, uh, get a wide-spreading, fast-spreading virus, if you want it. Uh, system infector going after the operating system files of, of various types, and of course the, um, the email viruses, uh, which latterly... Um, Things like the love bug, the Melissa virus, stuff like that, um, that would spread uh, via email. And, and again, you know, uh, sometimes all you needed to do was read the, the message, not even, you know, respond to it in any way. And it would uh, fire up some kind of executable and copy itself. And like I say, you know, copy itself, send itself to everybody on your contacts list or uh, address list. Okay, a uh, few more uh, things that we'll get into next time.